Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com. And Center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs support one of the center's core activities, which is collaboration and partnership with individuals, communities, and healing centers practicing personal growth and spiritual development. And our guest today is Hallie Bourne, and we will be talking with Holly about her healing work. And now I will bring Hallie on screen. Well, I'll begin by saying thank you, Hallie, for being with me. It's nice to connect with you. Likewise, it really is. Now, Holly, if someone visits your website, the banner on your website greets the visitor with true self, mindful life coaching, and meditation. And to begin, I wanted to ask you, what is this true self that you speak of? That is a great question. Wow, I don't get that question a lot. You'd think I would. Um, so I'm a student of yoga and have been for about 25 years and have gone beyond the physical practice and into the deeper practices of yogic philosophy and spirituality, breathing techniques, things of that nature. And one of the things I discovered in reading Yoga Sutras, which is the, the codices for yoga practice, um, the, the true self is referred to. And this is the part of us that arises when the vacillations of the mind are quieted. And that is, according to the Yoga Sutras, the reason to practice yoga is to quiet the vacillations of the mind in order for the true self to be revealed. So that's where that that concept comes from for me and it's it has proven to be true in my own practice and certainly what I offer to people I work with. Now you've spoken about yoga and you've spoken about the expansive practice of yoga uh, flowing if I may use that word not to not to pun too much um, but flowing into your practice. How does the yogic tradition present itself and extend itself uh, through the work you do? Um, well, I'm still teaching yoga classes um, as far as, you know, taking people through poses. However, um, I, I would say that my, my offering now has gone much deeper into my true love, which is breath and meditation, and those are some of the deeper practices. And so just last year, in the amazing 2017, I launched my first ever nine week meditation program, which really synthesizes all of this understanding about how to start working with all the distractions of the mind through connecting with the body. So what I offer is still very yogic in nature because of its groundedness in physicality. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the movement and flow of breath that can take us to that sense of true self separate from the contents of the mind or what I call ego mind. So yeah, yoga is the underpinning of all of that. Although you won't really hear me much saying, okay, well, this is what will happen if you're doing warrior pose, right. you know, which is useful, but it's, it's not really where I'm at with my teaching anymore. Now you've talked about the yoga tradition's influence on your offering and it sounds like your two primary services are spiritual and creativity coaching and meditation training. So spiritual and creativity coaching and meditation training. Can you tell us about these services? Sure. Yeah, thank you. You really looked well into my website. Nice work, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the spiritual coaching has, has a lot to do with um, helping people to connect with something beyond the mind. 
And, you know, there are lots of words out there that I think are problematic for many of us when the word spirituality comes up, which, you know, gets tagged to religion, it gets tagged to extremism, it gets tagged to misunderstandings and problems with the word God. And I just kind of want to put all of that aside and come to a place of, again, this idea of true self. So I like to help people get serious about what they want to be accomplishing in their life based on who they know themselves to be, not who they think themselves to be. So the, the spiritual coaching has more to do with, let's get honest. Let's look at what you think you should be and compare it to your passion, to what gives you joy in life, what, what guides you to happiness and makes you a better person. You know, so there's, there's divinity in that, but I tend to not go towards those kinds of terms. I really like the way the Center for Human Awakening talks about spirituality, with it being about awareness and individual consciousness raising and mm -hmm. um, helping us all move into a greater center of compassion. So that's, that's more of the place that I come from with the spiritual coaching. What's your understanding of connection with, with sacredness? How does sacredness play in your life? What's going to bring you more peace and joy and love? Mm -hmm. And then with creativity, mm. um, this is born out of a, a recent, um, I guess, coming to Jesus. I'll use that word, coming to Jesus with creativity in my own life. I have always been involved in creative pursuits. My um, academic degree is in theater arts, and I'm a painter, I'm a singer, I'm a writer, I'm a dancer, and these are just a part of the way that I have always lived. And there have been times, because I had some idea that I needed to be practical, that I put all of those things aside, and then depression started to come to the surface. So I realized recently that this isn't, this isn't something frivolous. Creativity is not something that's a luxury. It's a human necessity for us to express the sacred, for us to express joy, to make sense of the world, even to express sadness and the whole range of emotions. It's a way of being human. And so the, the creativity piece of the coaching, I really help people get around all of the reasons that they're not practicing their art, their love, their joy. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Procrastination, perfectionism, um, depression, and all of those kind of go alongside with uh, really sensitive people. And sensitive people, I think, have a really hard time in an apparently insensitive world. And so that, that coaching is for me to support those people because we need that voice right now, especially as capitalism is chewing up all the resources and leaving us all for dead. We've got to have the sensitive people coming to the fore, being empowered, being protected even, and creativity, I think, is the way. What about the meditation that you offer? What was your question about the meditation, just to tell you about it? Yeah, what, um, what products or services, what could someone look forward to? Yeah, yeah. I am so proud of my nine-week program, and it is the program that I wish someone had given to me 25 years ago when I first became interested. So it's got a lot of heart and soul in it. And... It, it, it again is a nine week program that I work virtually with people live on Skype or Zoom or any of you know those video services and take them through a lesson that is all founded in yogic philosophy on some level but does incorporate some Buddhist philosophy and other Asian ideas, Eastern ideas, but also incorporates Western psychology as well, as well as um, body wisdom. And it comes with three audios that are pre-recorded that get disseminated throughout the program so people can practice the techniques on their own. And so the nice thing about my program is that it kind of prevents the pitfalls that happen 
when we just go take a class and then we go home and we're like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? And this is happening. I can't still my mind. I can't meditate. What the hell? Right? So it really helps to just kind of bring all that into the fold. I get to hold people's hand through that process and give them a foundation so that they can feel really safe and secure in, in a fledgling practice and then build something that's going to sustain them for the rest of their days. Mm. And that's really my goal with it is I'm going to give you this for the rest of your life. This is not just for you to experiment with or let's have a little fun at being spiritual, right? But it is to really give people a context to face whatever complexity this human life presents so that we can let go, be at peace, and have the true self be prominent through all of those movements of life. Holly, what brought you to do this work? What inspires you to keep doing this work? Oh, I, I'm going to try really hard to make this a concise answer, <laughs> but it's been a long, um, rocky, wonderful journey. Um, but I, I guess I'll say that um, 25 years ago, I had a car accident that I nearly didn't survive, but obviously did. Broke both of my legs, crushed my pelvis, broke some ribs, gave me some head trauma. And I was suddenly faced with the possibility that I would never walk again. And so there was um, a real comeuppance at that point about who am I right now? Who have I been? And who do I want to be? And there were some friends from the theater who took me in and exposed me to all sorts of different ideas that I had not been exposed to before, like uh, Marianne Williamson and Way of the Peaceful Warrior, you know, Dan Wakefield and um, uh, Course in Miracles and Siddhartha and on and on. Like it just exploded into all of these ideas. And then after I was walking again, which took about six months, a girlfriend invited me to my first yoga class. And in that yoga class, I noticed immediately something was different with the way I was interfacing with my thoughts and with my sense of self. And at the time I was um, really traumatized for really the, the, all the years that had come before then at that point, and also physically traumatized as well. So those experiences opened a door for me to go, to go deeper and to want to really address the deep pain I was experiencing at that point. And the reason I continue doing it is because it works. And I have continued to grow and learn more. It's as though I, at that point, was standing at the edge of some great chasm that I thought had a bottom, but it doesn't. And I just keep going deeper and deeper. And I think it is, it, is, it is a way to move through this life with more grace, more ease, more peace, and fundamentally more awareness and compassion. You remind me of the wisdom saying, we teach what we want to learn. And we learn what we want so to do. It's so true. Now, you also offer some workshops. I do. Um, and can you first tell us a little bit about those workshops you do offer? And what can someone attending your workshops look forward to? You know, the, the workshops that I have listed on the website are really just a small sample now of what I'm moving into because I, I can't be kept still for long. Um, but I, I will say what's consistent in all of the workshops that I offer is, is a way to slow down and tune in. And you notice that that's the tagline for my business. You know, the, the way that culture has developed in the West is we want to go faster, we want to go bigger, we want better and more, right? But I don't think better and more really comes into play unless we slow down and tune in. So I think a lot of our anxiety, 
depression, dissatisfaction comes from pushing too hard, too fast and forgetting who we are in the midst. So in each of those workshops that I offer, it's always going to be about let's stop for a moment. Let's look at what you're thinking. Let's become more aware. Let's tune into how you're feeling. And then let's breathe through all of it and let go of the judgment. So regardless of what I'm offering, that's going to be the fundamentals of it. I'm really excited about um, offering a workshop this spring. It'll be my first vision board workshop. And this will include both movement, breath, and meditation, in addition to getting out the scissors, the glue, and the glitter, and making some art happen. So I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> Sounds creatively beautiful. That's the idea. Now, Hallie, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, reach out to you directly, how can they do so? Is there an email address? Can they get in touch with you through your website? Sure, absolutely. People can go to my website and there's um, a, a contact page that they can go to. They can also email me directly at Hallie at Hallieborn.com. So that's H-A-L-L-I at H-A-L-L-I-B-O-U-R-N-E.com. Yeah. yeah. And I also have a Facebook page, True Self Coaching with Hallie Bourne. And I'm on Twitter, which is just under Hallie Bourne. And your website address is? Oh, yes. Good. Um, Hallieborn.com. Very good. We'll make sure that's in the scrolling credits. Oh, I good. That makes it easy. Hallie, I want to thank you very much for it's being with me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thanks for sharing your gifts with us. My pleasure. I Thank hope you, you have a wonderful day. You Great too. talking to you, Robert. Bye-bye.